Shalom, my name is Rachel Friedman, and I'm Associate Dean of Drisha Institute for Jewish Education, where I have the pleasure of teaching Tanakh and Tefillah. Today, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts with you on the Torah reading of Bo, Parashat Bo. I've always found it fascinating to consider the role of time in the Bible. In the book of Breshit, Genesis, the root kadosh, which we generally translate as holy or sacred, appears only once, and that's in connection with time. When God completes the creation, God blesses the seventh day and declares it holy, thereby asserting the sanctity of time. We don't encounter sacred space, however, until the book of Shemot, Exodus. In the revelation by God to Moshe at the burning bush, God says to Moshe, do not come closer. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you stand is kadosh, it is holy ground. In light of this, it's interesting that the very first commandment that God gives the nation of Israel relates to time rather than space. Before Am Yisrael leaves Egypt, God instructs Moshe and Aaron, and I'm reading from Shemot 12.2, Exodus 12.2, Hachodesh hazeh lachem rosh chodashim, rishon hu lachem lechodshe hashana. This month is for you the beginning of the months. It shall be for you the first of the months of the year. This command has been the subject of many different interpretations by the sages over the millennia. According to a classic rabbinic interpretation, Exodus 12.2 teaches the law of the sanctification of the new month, Kiddush HaChodesh. In this reading, God points to the new moon, as it were, and says to Moshe, when the moon looks like this, hachodesh hazeh, declare the beginning of the month and set for yourself rosh chodesh. The medieval commentator Ramban, Nachmanides, however, focuses on the plain sense of Exodus 12.2 and emphasizes its symbolic significance to the nation of Israel. Hachodesh hazeh lachem rosh chodashim. This month shall mark for you the beginning of all of the months. Since the exodus from Egypt is the start of a new order of life for the nation of Israel, it's appropriate that their religious calendar reflect this new order by numbering the months of the year from the month of Yitziat Mitzrayim, from the month of the exodus. The Hebrew months are given ordinal numbers in the Bible, just like the days of the week, beginning with the first month, the month of the Exodus, the month of Passover. Just as we count the days of the week until the completion of creation, so too our counting of the months of the year starts with our creation, the Exodus. And so, Ramban concludes, every time an Israelite refers to any month, he or she must remember the great miracle of the redemption from Egyptian bondage. My favorite interpretation of Exodus 12.2 is the homiletic comment of Rabbi Ovadia Sparno, and I'll read it to you. Hachodesh hazeh lachem rosh chodashim. This month shall be for you the beginning of months. Henceforth, the months of the year shall be yours to do with them as you will. During the bondage, however, your days did not belong to you but were used to serve others and fulfill their wills. Therefore, this month shall be the first month of the year for you. Hachodesh hazeh lachem. For in this month, your existence as a people of free choice began. Sephorno reveals a deeper truth implicit in our verse. It's only with the exodus from Egypt that the people of Israel gained control over time. Why is it so significant that the very first command that God gives Israel as a nation relates to time rather than space? Today, we're blessed with a great gift. The center of Judaism is physically located in the land of Israel. But when the people of Israel choose to become God's nation, sacred space is not yet a tangible part of their religious equation. There's no temple, and their land is but a distant promise. Israel becomes God's nation when it begins to define time with reference to its relationship with God. When the month of the Exodus becomes the first month of the year in the Israelite calendar, the nation of Israel is born through the definition of time. 
There's nothing more difficult for human beings than to define time. There's no greater challenge than setting priorities with the time that's available to us. No greater challenge than saying, this comes first, and this must be postponed for later. But what God asks Israel to do is not merely to define time, but to combine two calendars, two systems of marking time that often don't coincide. The religious calendar marks the major events of biblical history within the framework of lunar months, but the seasonal calendar, which marks economic events, is solar. The challenge of defining time, of living by two calendars, one that is secular and one that is religious, is the metaphorical challenge of the Jewish nation. The Torah commands that we cease secular activity each Friday at sundown and every Jewish holiday, but the worlds of commerce and agriculture move forward without us. It's a constant struggle to reconcile practical Judaism with the demands and responsibilities of our environment. The Haggadah of Pesach mandates, in every generation one is obligated to see oneself as one who personally went out of the land of Egypt. If so, the season of the Exodus is the season for every Jew to reflect, to set priorities, in short, to take charge of our time. Hachodesh hazeh lachem rosh chodashim. We must look back at the moment in history when the month of the Exodus became for us the beginning and center of our existence as God's chosen nation. For as we revisit our past, we will be energized to confront the challenges of our future with the firm knowledge that the continued existence of Am Yisrael is etched in the eternal holiness of time. Shabbat Shalom, the Chodesh Mivarach.